plan for the future I live for right now I don't think they want to interrupt my party Please don't interrupt my party We just trying to find somebody for the night I don't think they want to interrupt my party Please don't interrupt my party We just trying to find somebody What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jacob, also known as Pick Management, here with my guy, Greg, a.k.a. Mr. Smackington. We are back for another week of NFL Best Bets right here on the Pick Management Network. Greg, how are you, buddy? Another great week in the bag. Crushed it last week. Uh, how you been? Man, how's everything going, man? It's a good week. It's a good weekend. Let's get to this money. Yeah, you're looking cozy there today. Oh, yeah, man. I got the roll. <laughs> Everything, bro. It's getting a little uh, well, chilly up here in the Midwest, baby. It is. It, is, it for sure is. It is fall for real. But uh, we are looking to have a good day. We have been crushing football so far this season. Um, I went on a run of like 31 and I think nine. Uh, you know, if you want to really follow us and know what we're doing, get our verified records, make sure to check us out on Juice Reel. It's the number one app to get your record verified if you're looking to take the next step in your betting career. Uh, they automatically sync to your sports book and provide you insights and analytics into how you wager to make you a better better. So make sure you check out Juice Reel uh, and you guys can get all our plays and whatnot on there. Uh, but we are looking to dive right into this NFL slate. So uh, Greg and I uh, both have a couple best bets that we picked out from the slate that we like. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, tomorrow, first game up that we're going to talk about Seahawks versus the Falcons. Falcons minus 160 on the money line. Uh, the spread is at three. The over under is at 51 and a half. And Greg, I know you like some quarterbacks in this game. Why don't you go ahead and let us know what? Yeah. Uh, this is a good 1 p.m. game, dome game. Um, things I went and noticed about this game, uh, is that, Seahawks is banged up, yes, uh, but the quarterback's not banged up, and it's wide out besides Lockett. No one else is banged up. Uh, Geno Smith this year has been almost averaging 300 yards per game, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter about what offense, I mean, what defense he's facing. He's been finding a way to uh, put that ball in the air, and he's been getting them, getting them passing yards up. Um when I go to the Atlanta side, Kirk Cousins himself, he's been averaging roughly like 280 a game. And uh, the thing I love about dome games is there's no weather conditions. So it should be no reason. It's going to be all on the quarterback to get that accuracy throw in there. You feel me? And today I'm loving both quarterbacks to get over their passing yard totals. Okay. It's going to be probably in the 250s, 260s, whatnot. Uh, that should be a no brainer for these two. Both defenses also aren't really good on the pass defense, okay? Uh, we've seen lately how the Seahawks have been just letting everyone run over them on defense. So we know that they're going to let up some points, okay, when it comes to the to the air, as well as Atlanta. So this game, I didn't really want to choose a side. I do see the overhitting. Like I said, I, I see this being a high-scoring game. But I want to put all of the focus on the quarterbacks here. So... I'm just loving the quarterbacks, both quarterbacks yeah. to get total over points. Yeah, I uh, love it. Uh, right now, Geno Smith, his passing total is at 262 and a half, and Kirk Cousins is at 266 and a half. Uh, you know, something to know about this game. I got a couple plays on it too, but uh, the Seahawks are giving up the second most points and yards in the league right now. Um, you know, and who would think in 2024 we're talking about Geno Smith and Kirk Cousins as like two of the most electric quarterbacks in the NFL right now? Uh, but that's where we're at, and uh, you know they've been putting on display after display each week, and I really think that we're going to get another one here. I like high scoring game in this one, uh, but I did take a side. I am on the Falcons. Uh, I just think at home right now, too much to handle. They're rolling. This is a dump truck of a team. And I don't think that the Seahawks on the road are going to have enough to handle it. Uh, so for Greg and I, he's on the uh, quarterbacks passing totals over. And I like the Falcons minus 160 here. Um, so, yeah, that's what we are on for that one. Uh, our next game up, though, we're going to talk about this uh, 
sorry, the Eagles game. Uh, Eagles are taking on the Giants. Uh, Greg, I know you didn't have anything specifically for this one, but I'm going to go ahead and pull mine up because, uh, listen, this Giants team has been hanging tough, you know, all season long. They've, you know, played better than most people have expected. You know, they've made some games interesting and, um, you know, I think that they're going to hit their ceiling here. I think that this Philly team is offensively better, defensively better, better coached, better skill positions, you know, across the board. They just kind of are just a better um, everywhere. Uh, so I really like Philly here on the road. I think you're getting a decent price, minus 175. It's a little juicy, but sometimes it's worth the squeeze. Uh, and, yeah, I really like the Eagles to get it done here. Uh, any thoughts for you on this one, Mac? Yeah, I was sitting there like I was noticing this is probably gonna be um gonna be a tough division game, man. I mean, uh I know it sounds crazy right now, even be on it, but look, New York, the city of New York should be on fire right now. You know, it's got the Mets in the series, they got the Yankees in the series. Right. <laughs> Giants are at home. I mean, I just feel like the city itself is gonna try to help amplify what the Giants may try to do um this sunday but yeah just the offense alone for the philadelphia eagles is just overpowering for the giants right now especially with malik neighbors not being 100 percent healthy uh and he was he was the new guy uh over yep. there so there's no telling what they're gonna do man uh yeah great great stuff from smack uh listen i know you have a play for us on this next game texans taking on the packers why don't you go ahead i know you got some props for this one Yes, man, this is a very great game for these two quarterbacks right here. Uh, both have been exhilarating great poise when it comes to uh, behind the helm. Uh, yeah, we know Jordan Love caught his injury early on that out-of-town game against the Eagles whatnot, but since then he's bounced back. And to me, he's been looking pretty phenomenal. Um, when I look at C.J. Stroud his last few games, he's been looking pretty phenomenal himself. Uh, excuse me, sorry. The offense is just starting to like get a, a, a good gel. They just traded Cam Akers away, so they've been trying to figure out how they want to run this offense with Diggs in here with Dale back fully healthy. So it's just having a little bit of set uh, problems with that, but I think they're getting it together. So with that being said, the quarterbacks here. All right, this is a great game for the quarterbacks to show what they are teams. Okay, I'm taking both quarterbacks to get over one and a half passing touchdowns all right this should be basically a simple easy thing for the quarterbacks i don't know when it's gonna happen uh it should be probably done in the first half though you know what i'm saying if everything oh uh, uh, it looks like uh smack's breaking up a little bit there but sorry we lost you just at the end there but uh, you know i was gonna jump in and, and uh let you know um, you know, this Houston team has a ton of injuries going into the game. Oh, sorry, Bruno. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, that's what happens when you have dogs. Uh, so we are oh, sorry. Um, Jordan Love passing touchdowns over one and a half. Um, yes. Yeah, Houston. Sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, Houston, uh, all banged up, and uh, I really think that the Green Bay at home is going to be able to capitalize on that. There's a lot of defensive uh, injuries that are popping up for Houston. It looks like a bunch of people are going to be sitting, so I really like Jordan Love to be able to get over his passing touchdowns. Right now, uh, you could still get it at a uh, under t- minus 200. It's at minus 190 right now, uh, so still some time to jump on it before it gets too steep. And then C.J. Stroud, even without Nico Collins there and, you know, some of their injury concerns, uh, you know, he's going to have to be playing from behind. He's going to be slinging the ball. I think this is a high-scoring game, and I can, you know, he's been balling out all season. So I I could, you know, easily see him having two passing touchdowns here. Yeah, I think this is the the simplest of the the play. I mean, we know this is the NFL. Let's say any game really holds true, man. You be seeing shit. To expect it to happen and next thing you know something else happens so in this type of situation with this type of magnitude of a game i definitely would want to just put the pressure on the most important players on the field yep great stuff and uh again sorry about bruno he's going nuts downstairs you know 
whatever. We're dog lovers here, so <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Uh, so moving on though, uh, next game up, uh, we're gonna talk about the uh, Bengals are taking on the Browns. Uh, Bengals minus two sixty on the money line, minus five and a half on the spread. Over under at forty one and a half. Um, you know, I really like the Bengals here. Uh, you know, the, the line's getting a little out of control at five and a half for me. It's getting a little too steep to take. I get Cleveland is bad right now, like really bad. But I think, you know, Joe Burrow has always struggled against Cleveland. It's a division game. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of, you know, craziness happens in these division, you know, mismatches and whatnot. So, um, I didn't know how to take a side in this one, but I think the Bengals are just uh, offensively, you know, head and shoulders above uh, where the Browns are. So I took the Bengals team total over 23 and a half. Um, you got some thoughts for me on this one? Could you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm back. I can hear you. All right. Uh, no, no. So I was just saying um, – I didn't know how to jump on a side for this one because the Bengals uh, in a division matchup five and a half is a lot for me. So I decided to take the Bengals team total over 23 and a half here. I just think that offensively way better than Cleveland, better skill position. Um, our, their offense is uh, going to be able to overtake this Browns defense. that has been pretty porous. Uh, I know you had a play here too. So I wanted to hear your thoughts on this one. Yeah, man, ironically, man, this is one of them things when I feel the people should want to know to take this play for show, even if it's on a single bet. Uh, I'm also all over the Bengals team total over, but I took it up to 27 and a half. There's no way they don't drop 28 on the Browns, all right? I love the Browns, all right, you feel me? I'm up here in Ohio right now in Cleveland, you feel me? Well, not really in Cleveland. I'm outside of Cleveland, but Cleveland is the closest to me, you feel me? But uh, the boys, this is abysmal right now. Uh, not on, not only that, they just ruined chemistry on the offense with trading Amari Cooper. Um, Nick Chubb is supposedly to come back, so that means they're going to try to keep the ball on the ground a lot. Uh, I think they're going to try to slowly but surely break Deshaun Watson out of whatever he has been trying to do and turn him into a third option on the offense. So – Look forward for the Browns to like really have no really offensive structure for like at least the next two three weeks. Um, and their defense, like I say, is just an abysmal. Miles Garrett can't do everything on his own. And uh, I mean, six games is enough for me to see that they ain't <laughs> shit right now. So, um, like I say, I took the Bengals up to twenty seven and a half. Yes, it's a division game. Yes, Joe Burrow's been struggling. Uh, this is going to be that game. He says, "Fuck you guys." You know, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, uh, like I said, I, I, I don't know if this is – I heard this on another show, but I don't know, so I don't know how 100% true this is, but Burrow has never really beaten the Cleveland oh, in Cleveland, his, right? His record is terrible in, against Cleveland. In right, Cleveland. and and the other thing is you know, the, the Browns have really been able to hold him back the last few games, 232, 239, and just 82 passing yards in their last three meetings. So I think, you know, Burrow – with a chip on his shoulder and being able to see that, oh, he's going to be able to take off the head of office Browns team right now. and just embarrassed. Yeah. He's never Kyle been Watson. in Cleveland ever, bro. But yeah. Um, I think that changes today. So uh, I really like the Bengals in total here. Um, if you, like I said, follow us on our juice reel and whatnot, I'm going to have some extra plays involving this, some money lines, some, you know, teasers and whatnot. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, that's at a uh, juice reel. Uh, but, Greg, I know you have another one. We're going to talk about this next game up, the Colts game. Uh, the Colts are playing the Dolphins. Dolphins, yeah. Um, Colts minus 160 on the money line. Spread is at three total over under 43 and a half. Why don't you go ahead and let us know what you like in this one? Yeah, I just took uh, what seemed to be the most obvious. Like, like I said, six games, people – should be paying attention to what's happening with the games if they're watching a little bit of the game. Um, the scores don't really tell the tale, okay? It's how the scores are being, you know, laid out. And what I still see from the Dolphins is that they still got defense, all right? Yeah, their offense is 
basically the Browns defense. Okay, they're in abysmal right now. All right. Tyler Huntley's trying. He's getting his extra week now to learn the playbook. He's getting a little bit more, uh, I would say, comfortable with this offense that he's you know, been, like yeah, real NFL speed. That's uh, I, I feel like he's getting used to the the pace of play. Yeah, especially being a backup for so long, you know, you don't really get those many snaps. The guys don't know you. You don't really know guys' timings. Yeah. So this was going to be a working progress for the Dolphins as well. But like I said, the one thing I do know that the Dolphins have is defense, all right? Anthony Richardson ain't played in a few weeks. He should be dumb rusty, okay? With that being said, yeah, they probably get down to the red zone, but I don't see the Dolphins letting them just run all over them. Um, if Flacco is in even, I don't see the Dolphins letting them run all over them. So I'm just going to take the Colts to just get me three field goals individually, all right? Yeah. Uh, that, that to me seems like – the most feasible thing to take in this game versus taking a side. A spread like this to me also just seems just so iffy tricky. Definitely. You know, it should be like at least six. I mean, we know the Dolphins really don't have an offense. Uh, you know, they're not really <laughs> making it difficult for me to sit there and say the Dolphins can or can't. But with a spread like this, it's kind of showing maybe the Dolphins can win. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But I would rather focus on what I see – definitely happening and that's the Dolphins defense holding it down and forcing the Colts to three field goals in this game you know if you're not tailing Greg you need to be because he's been killing it all season long with a lot of these other kind of props like these field goals over and whatnot he actually on a Thursday night football he just missed uh, like a plus like three thousand parlay uh because uh no interceptions but it's because he was nailing these field goals so uh, Greg is really dialed in when it comes to the um, – I'll say the one thing you're really good at is, like, seeing the game script and being able to, you know, foresee what how it's going to play out. And that's one thing that I always liked about your picks and whatnot, and then that's why I trust in it. So a little, little uh, thought on Greg's picks and why you need to be following along a little bit more closely. Uh, the last game we are going to talk about, though, is this Lions versus the Vikings game. Uh, Lions minus 105 on the money line. Uh, it's at minus one on the spread. Uh, total is at 50 and a half. Uh, probably the most exciting game of the week. Uh, both these teams have been super dominant all season long. Uh, Greg, I know you have some feelings on this one. Why don't you go ahead and let us know? Yeah, man. Like he was just talking about them interceptions, man. We was talking about it. These DBs, that's why they DBs, man. They're not wide <laughs> These bitches cannot hold the ball, bro. But it's all good. You know, what I learned in this game of betting is uh, if they fail you today, they will make it up to you tomorrow, all right, with the exact same play. You feel me? You don't run from it. You go back to it. They owe you. You feel me? But, no, with this game right here, this is a great game, a great divisional game, too. It's a great dome game. You know what I'm saying? So I'm putting all the pressure again back on them quarterbacks, all right? One thing we know and two things for sure is that uh, the Vikings' defense has been just phenomenal. They've been biting, you feel me, biting, all right? And the Lions, yes, they are starting to turn over that leaf to show how serious they want to be contenders for the Super Bowl. And in order to do that, like I told you, they got to have defense, okay? Yep. These offenses is going to be put to the limit of blitzes like I've never seen probably all season so far, all right? Um, I'm expecting both of these defenses to rattle these quarterbacks to doing something stupid. A bounce off of the head, whatever, a, 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 a pat down that's going to turn into, guess what I need, an interception. Okay? But I'm taking both quarterbacks to get an interception. Goff, he hasn't had one in his past few games, but he hasn't really played against a defense that's given him the pressure. Right. That's forcing him to do so. Earlier in the season, though, he's been throwing them bitches left and right to the <laughs> other team. I'll uh, tell you, uh, Minnesota ranked second in run defense and first in opponent passer rating. So, a great matchup against the uh, the Lions team. It's really going to throw like a wrench in. in they got they, they got they got three on AA Ron. You feel me? So if you yep. if you get if you get three on AA Ron, I know you can let golf give you one. And then on the other side, Sam Darnold, he's been showcasing. Hey, I wasn't as trash as y'all thought I was when I was with the Jets. <laughs> So he's been showing he can air that shit out. And you got Justin Jefferson over there who's trying to go get it. A few times he's had a few mishaps. I really mad at Sam Donald because they, they record still showcases that he's been 
on the right track. But he also has been interception heavy all season. But that's yeah. because he's been he's been trying to show he ain't no bum. So I expect the Lions defense, which has also just been pretty okay for the most part in the secondary, they should be able to get one themselves as well. So I'm taking both quarterbacks to go in. All right. Um, you know, I was going to take the Lions, but I feel like talking this through with you makes me want to not take the Lions money line anymore. So I may need to adjust my thinking before I drop that and make it official. Um, you know, I didn't realize how good that Minnesota defense really is. But when you say it out loud like that, number two run defense and passer rating, you know, that's that really takes multiple facets away from this Lions game. And I don't know where else they're going to be able to make that up. So, and, uh, and look, and since they know coming in, Lions is a two headed rushing team, right? Yeah. So it's going to be a ground pound game. Right. In a ground pound game, you know, good things that more than likely should be trying to happen is them not really letting the other score. Right. I, I love the under in this game for sure, only because the defense is showcase that the under should really be. I took the under in them last time, but they ran all over what you call it. So it, it, it made a <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's no way Minnesota's letting them put up no 25 at all. I don't, I, hell no. Impossible. All right. Uh, well, do you want to go ahead and recap your plays and let people know where they can find you? Yeah, man. So I'll, I'll start with this Lions and Minnesota game since we just finished. I have both quarterbacks, Goff and Sam Darnold, to both uh, throw one interception. Okay. Uh, we can go to the Bengals and Browns game. I have the Bengals team total over 27 and a half. I, I, I took it up. It is at the 23 and a half, but I took it up to 27 and a half. I feel they're going to get 28 on the Browns. Uh Next game up, I have Houston, Texans versus the Green Bay Packers, another great quarterback duo in which I took just the quarterbacks to both get over one and a half passing touchdowns, all right? Cash that. Uh, next game, I got the Miami Dolphins versus the Indianapolis Colts. Like I said, Miami offense is abysmal, but one thing we definitely st see that they still have is a solid defense. And uh, with Anthony Richardson just coming back in from a few weeks off, I don't see that offense really clicking like that, but I definitely see that kicker getting his Jones on. You feel me? So we're going to take the Colts to get over two and a half field goals in that game. And uh, last but not least, we are going to end it with the uh, Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons game. Like I said, this is the dome game. All right. Geno Smith, damn near averaging 300 some plus a game. Okay. I don't care who he playing. Y'all ain't going to stop him. All right. Kirk Cousins, I mean, his second to last game, he dropped 500 yards passing. You feel me? I don't understand why these boys both shouldn't get over their passing yards, which is what I'm taking, all right? I'm taking just the quarterbacks to get over their passing yards for this game. Lock that shit in. Love it. Great stuff from Smack. Uh, you can find him across all the socials at Mr. Underscore Smackington. Make oh. sure you give him a follow. Uh, a great follow across all his socials. Uh, make sure to follow us on our juice reel uh, at pick management. Make sure to follow the YouTube right here. Uh, yeah, we are almost at 1400 subscribers. So we really appreciate all the love you guys are showing and the support. Make sure to tell your friends to tune in to watch the show. Uh, my best bets for this week. I'm on Falcons money line bills team total over 24 and a half. Oh, did we talk about the bills game? I don't think we talked about the Bills game. We gotta get in the Bills. Uh, game. you know what? Uh, tune in later uh, for a full breakdown of the Bills game since I <laughs> missed that one. Uh, but but Bills team total over twenty four and a half. Eagles money line minus one seventy five. Bengals team total over twenty three and a half. I did not buy it up. Uh, and tentatively, I'm still on Lions money line. But uh, I'll let you know if I'm gonna make that official. You guys can find me across all socials at Pick Management. Enjoy your Saturday. It's a loaded slate, college football, uh, European soccer is finally back, hockey, NBA preseason, you name it. We got all the great stuff going on, and we got best bets galore. So uh, make sure you guys give us a follow. That'll do it for us, though, for uh, this week seven NFL best yeah. bet show. Here, right? You ready? <laughs> hey, man, we got one for y'all Monday because we got a doubleheader on Monday. 
Oh yeah, well yeah, we'll come back. We'll make sure to do an actual one for that too. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be on here more now that I'm back alive. So uh, make sure to stay tuned. That'll do it for us here at the NFL Betting Insiders. We will see you later. You came to prepare for the future. I live right now. I don't think they want.